Hello everyone and welcome again to my Warhammer 40k Orcs in 6th edition Tactica video series. Today I'm going to be going over with you the Warboss HQ choice. Now this is just the uh, Assault and Black Reach Warboss model. Uh, he's in the middle of being converted at the moment so I apologize for that and the fact you'll be seeing him one more time. He is eventually going to become my weird boy. But since I have him here, I'm going to go over him with you. So the orc war bosses are basically the meat of it. Basically, the main orc in your army. He is going to lead your wog. He is the leader of every wog, and a wog is the invasion f force going into a sector of space or planet. And the war boss is going to be the biggest and baddest and meanest of all your orcs. So if you're going to be running a war boss, you may want to make him be one of your biggest models, unless you have a war boss on top of having Gazgul Thraka. Anyways, I can't give you specific, I can't give you a specific stat line or points value, just because of the fact that I don't want to have GW get out breathing down my neck. But I can talk to you about what I would do with him and what options he does have. Now, as far as HQs go, he is a really good one. And he can be rather flexible, despite the fact that there are better options out there. Well, anyways. Uh, he comes standard with uh, a Slugger, a Shooter, a Chapa, and st Stick Bombs. And he does have basically all the big special rules, including independent character and furious charge, mob rule, wog. And he also allows you to take a uh, one unit of mega knobs or knobs as a troop's choice, which is a huge advantage because knobs and mega knobs are very, very strong elite choices, and they can make a really, really good scoring troop choice if you do bring yourself a war boss. On top of that. His upgrades are amazing. His upgrades are amazing. You can give him a big choppa or a power claw. Their place is normal choppa. And uh, as you see, this one's got a power claw. Power claws are great. It pretty much gives him the ability to wound anything your opponent can throw at him. And you can replace a slugger with either a shooter, ro a shooter or slash rocket combi weapon, a shooter slash scorcher combi weapon, or a twin link shooter. I think he's got a. Sp Twin Link Shooter on this model. He, that's going to get chopped off, though, for the conversion, I think. He can also give him Mega Armor, so he can be a Mega Armored War Boss. And can you also put him on a bike. And then you can also give him, like, an Ammo Run and Attack Squeak. Uh, give him Cyborg Body for the, I believe it's Feel No Pain. That or it's a, um, Invulnerable Save. One of those two. Uh, boss pole, which he does have. That's this thing on the back here, and that helps you. Re uh, that helps you re-roll failed um, morale checks, and uh, you also can give him heavy armor. And there's a little note down here saying the war boss may not have both mega armor and a war bike. He is not. He would probably fall off a lot. Uh, as I said, war boss is a very very flexible unit choice, or a very very flexible HQ. He, you'll never regret making him your warlord, that's for sure. And because he's so flexible, you have a lot of options of what you can do with him depending on who you're playing up against. If you want to get right in the faces of your opponent, the war boss, who should be leading your army, should be going straight for the combat. You want to put him in a fast force, put him either in a truck, a battle wagon, or on a bike and throw him in with some knobs, mega knobs or a whole unit of bikers and just run them straight up there. You can also have him be a uh, tank hunter doing it that way. Maybe run him up with a uh, group of war bikes with him on a war bike. Split him off at the last second and have him take out s some key tanks. I, uh, Imperial Guard has a basilisk sitting in the back giving you heck. Run it. You can go have him back there, take care of that thing in a turn. Go take care of a defiler in that same way. Or maybe your foot schlagen. Throw him in a huge group of boys. Let them absorb the wounds as he walks him across the field. Have him call out that wog at the last minute and just overtake your opponent. 
the war boss is one of the, as I said, one of the most flexible <clears throat> uh, choices you have in your army. And since he does do extra work by making your mobs and mega knobs a troop choice, he gives your army that much more of a punch to it. Because now suddenly you can have three units, three or four units, I don't, whatever, I think you can take three elite choices, but you can have three units at the very least of mega knobs, and one of them is scoring. That is huge. Because mega knobs are really powerful and really, really worth taking. As long as you can get them across the field, you have to throw them in that battle wagon. Now, another problem, though, with the war boss, though, is if you use the tactic where he does run up front, which is very, very orky, don't get me wrong, you are also looking at possibly always, almost always giving up Slay the Warlord, but with orcs, if you're able to overrun your opponent like you should be able to if you're running a horde army, or a horde version of the army, then doing that should not be too much of an issue because maybe you can table your opponent or maybe you can steal the objectives they want that are on their half of the table that's one of the few things that's one uh, not a few things that's one thing orcs are really good at taking your opponent's objectives you're a little it's a little bit harder for you to hold your own but if you want to take your opponent's objectives orcs can do it with their low costs and their ability to take fast even though they're very fragile vehicles you can usually get your orcs across the table and there's very few upgrades that aren't worth taking. The power claw I almost would always run. The boss pole I would almost always run. If I'm going to throw him in a group of mega knobs, I might even consider giving him mega armor. I don't see that run too often, but I would do it. And just try some combinations to see what you could have fun with. I could see him running with a Scorcha and just blowing away a whole group of, I don't know, Tau Fire Warriors without even having to charge them. As like I said, he's got a lot of options, and he's a very, very strong choice for an HQ unit. With a few exceptions being something like if you want to take Gazgul Thraka instead. But we'll get into Gazgul Thraka later. Anyways, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please ask below, because I know I can't cover everything about them without just rambling on and on. And I want to try to keep these videos under 10 minutes if I can. Anyways, happy Wargaming, everyone. I will see you in the next video.